One of the advantages of having a well set up four wheel drive vehicle like this one is you can take a lot of gear with you when you go away. All the comforts are home, including the kitchen sink. Well, almost. On this episode of 4x4 Australia's How To Off-Road Driving Series, we're going to talk about packing gear and packing it into your four wheel drive. So when you go away four wheel driving, there's a whole heap of gear that you need to take with you. And all of this adds up and it gets quite heavy. So you need to know what your vehicle's payload is because if you exceed the vehicle's GVM, which is the gross vehicle mass, it's not only bad for the vehicle affecting the way it drives and handles and stops, but it's also illegal and it could void your insurance. Well, heavy items are like tools and water and stuff like that. You wanna keep that gear as low as possible in the vehicle. That keeps the center of gravity low and doesn't affect the handling like it would if you had it up high. Having said that, some heavy stuff you're going to need to access quite easily. Things like recovery gear in case you get into strife. Despite the fact that this is a ute and it's got a canopy and there's a lot of space in there, there's still a finite amount of space. So we're not going to fit all of this gear in the back of this vehicle. So some of it's going to have to go up top on the roof rack. Things like the swag, I'll also put the recovery tracks up there. That way they're easy to get to when we need them. The other reason you don't want heavy stuff up on the roof is you have a roof load limit. Now there are a couple of roof load limits. There's a static limit, which is just when the vehicle is parked there and how much weight you can put up there. So you'd use a static limit when you're talking about how much a rooftop tent weighs with two people in it, for example. But you're not gonna have that much weight in there when you're driving. So you also have a driving roof load limit. Now some roof rack manufacturers also say that there's a, a reduced load limit when you're driving off-road. And that's because the vehicle bounces around and, and puts more strain on the roof rack system. So you must check with your roof rack manufacturer if there's a reduced load limit when driving off-road. So some other things I want to talk about is packing things like fuel and water. If you're going on a long trip and your standard tank's not going to cut it, the obvious thing to do is carry a couple of jerry cans but there are better ways of carrying extra fuel. If you fit a long range tank or an auxiliary fuel tank, that weight will be down low, down near the chassis of the vehicle, not up high. And it'll also keep the fuel out of the way. And fuel, as you know, particularly petrol, can be dangerous to carry around. Likewise with water, water is heavy. As you know, a litre weighs a kilo. So you wanna keep that weight as low as possible. If you can, fit a water tank underneath the vehicle. If you can't, Fit it up against the, uh, the headboard as low as you can in the tub. Or there are some water carrying systems like bladder systems that will sit on the floor near the back seat. Now talking about fuels, let's also talk about gas bottles. If you drive a four wheel drive wagon, you don't want a gas bottle in the vehicle with you. If you get a leak, it's gonna fill the cabin with gas. Likewise, fuel. Well, thankfully there's some fantastic purpose built jerry can holders and gas bottle holders that you can put up on your roof rack. Another very important consideration when packing your vehicle is how you secure that gear into your vehicle. If you drive a four-wheel drive wagon, for example, you don't want loose stuff bouncing around in the cabin that could whack you in the back of the head while you're driving off-road. You must make sure gear is secured properly. You should probably think about fitting a cargo barrier that keeps that gear separate from vehicle occupants. Even if you drive a ute with a canopy like this vehicle, you're still going to need to secure your gear properly, particularly the heavier items like tools and recovery gear. Better still, a good place for tools and recovery gear is in a drawer system like this. Uh, that keeps the, the weight nice and low and keeps it all separate and, and easy to access as well. You need to secure your fridge properly, but that's not all you need to think about with your fridge. You can see there's a vent in there for the uh, condenser and evaporator and all that kind of stuff. You need to make sure that there's plenty of space around there so the fridge will work and keep your stuff cool. If you have a fridge slide fitted, you're probably going to want a fridge barrier as well. We don't have one in this vehicle because we can access the fridge from the side opening there. But if you have a, a fridge slide, as you pull it out, gear can fall into there in behind the fridge. So you'll need a barrier to, uh, to keep that gear from falling in behind the fridge. The other advantage of a fridge barrier is you can hook things to it, like a fire blanket, or you could mount your fire extinguisher to it. Stuff that you need to get at quickly and you always know where it is. When I was a kid and we were packing to go away on the family holiday, Dad would get up early and he'd chuck everything in the wagon the way he wanted to fit it in. He wouldn't let anyone else near it. These days, you can share responsibilities. Perhaps you'll assign someone to uh, look after all the, 
cooking gear and the food and all that kind of stuff and someone else to look after all the tools and recovery gear that you're going to need. That person will probably be the driver, um, so they will know where things are when they need them. Now remember, if you've assigned packing tasks to different people, let them look after it. Don't mess with other people's packing duties. If they're anything like my old man, they're gonna get upset. They like to pack stuff their own way, and that's the only way. All right, now, we got a lot of gear to put in this vehicle, so uh, I know where I wanna put all this stuff, and I'm gonna get to it and do it now. Well, there you have it, packing your four-wheel drive. It might seem like a simple task, but I reckon there's a real art to it, and I reckon my dad taught me that when I was a little kid. You gotta do it right, and you gotta do it right every time. Anyway, that's 4x4 Australia's how-to guide to packing your four-wheel drive. I hope you enjoyed it.